Citigroup is in trouble. It's clear we have challenges that we need to urgently address. The change at City. I hope you've seen. We're acting on it. Are you confused about the ups and downs happening around Wall Street giants? While US firm Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan Chase & Co are expanding operations in Asian countries like China, one of the biggest banks worldwide, Citibank, are exiting their consumer banking in 13 countries, mostly in Asia. Citi lacks the scale it needs to compete there, but institutional clients there will still be served by Citi. The first woman CEO at a top-tier Wall Street Bank, Jane Frazier, exclaimed, Well, you should know what's going around City while analyzing the next S&P. The Great Recession of 2008, yes, the black period of economic globalization, has affected banks all over the world. They stopped lending to each other, making it harder for consumers and businesses to get credit. Citigroup had been particularly reckless in loading up on subprime mortgage-related securities that were now deemed toxic, causing them to struggle and later US government intervention. By November 2008, they were bankrupt, despite receiving $25 billion dollars in taxpayer-funded federal troubled asset relief program funds. This resulted in a stock decline. Shares of the company dropped more than 30% in the last five years. Slow progress? Worth it? One of the key issues Citibank still faces is its persistent underperformance in terms of profitability. Even though being the largest bank in the US at one point, it has slipped to third position. The group employee rating was 3.9 out of 5, globally ranking 11th in terms of total assets. The bank's profitability has been an utmost concern, leading to the need for urgent action. We know there is a clear case for change at City. I hope you've seen we're acting on it, positioning our firm's long-term future and tackling the issues that have held us back head-on, states Fraser. So, let's look at the changes City is making. In April 2022, Jane Fraser, Citigroup CEO, came up with the strategy of exiting from 13 market states outside the US including European, African, Middle East, and Asian retail markets, such as Australia, Bahrain, China, Indonesia, India, Korea, Malaysia, the Philippines, Poland, Russia, Thailand, Taiwan, and Vietnam, where more than one by third of City's net revenue in the year preceding. City India consumer banking customers are now served by Axis Bank in India. The ownership of the consumer banking business in City India was transferred to Axis Bank. The consumer banking customers can continue to use all existing City products and services, branches, internet banking, ATMs, and City Mobile app as usual. City India provides certain services for those products, and Axis Bank provides City branded consumer banking products in India. This enhanced Axis Bank deposit, credit card, and wealth franchise, and it gives it access to salary accounts of 1,600 corporates, which would serve as an easy base to cross sell Axis products. So it shows how the 50 year global consumer service failed under Jane Fraser, showing how City cannot manage too much, causing intense layovers and unemployment in the bank firms less focus on franchise state investment and lack of headquarter management, and focusing on peripheral parts catalyzed the inclination of value in the market as well. It helped the sharp growth of more actively driven locally owned competitors abroad. Instead, Citigroup is working on adding 500 people to its new wealth unit to divert its resources and concentrate on leveling up wealth management, which was successfully experimented with by several banks in recent years. Are you all aware banking is all about money? It offers significant returns and creates opportunities for growth in nations and people in the early phases of wealth establishment, such as in Asia and the Middle East. It also carries less danger and serious disasters. As a result, it may be better regulated in comparison. However, the city's new plan simplifies the business at its foundation. The theory is that if you reduce your footprint and stop doing so many things in so many different jurisdictions, you will have better critical mass in the financial markets. You choose to serve and fewer capital requirements since you are less complicated. You are simply simpler. When the city is finished developing more simple 
multiple company operations, they might look like the initial stages of Citigroup 25 years ago. So what's the deal with the 25-year-old Citigroup? Citibank was founded in 1812 as New York's first national city bank. The bank expanded rapidly after a series of mergers and was renamed Citibank in 1976. Over the next 15 years, they became the first and largest credit card issuer in the country, expanding to 90 different markets around the world and invading so many firsts, including the first credit card issuer in the country, the first to offer compound interest and checking accounts. The combination of Citicorps, the holding company, and the Travelers Group in 1998 created the Citigroup we now know today. So all of your financial needs are satisfied under one roof. And before the Great Recession, Citigroup was one of the largest banks in the US with assets exceeding $2.1 trillion. So one of the best examples of what might go bad in a financial crisis is Citigroup. Currently, Citigroup generates the majority of its money from two sources. In 2022, institutional clients accounted for 54.7% of total income, including their Wall Street operations, trading, advising services, and bank-to-bank -bank global collaborations. Second, despite their recent drop, the individual banking and people's wealth management sector, responsible for 32.1% of City Wealth Management Investment, has yet to be paid off. Their global wealth management was predicted to produce compounded annual growth in revenue in the high single digits in 2022, but it dropped by 5% in 2023. I'm experiencing a sharp collapse in investment banking. As a result, Citi urgently needed money to avoid a direct government diffusion of funds and a few large assets that might be sold. To cope with the financial crisis, they sold their wealth management business, Smith Barney, to Morgan Stanley, an American multinational investment bank and financial services company that has developed into one of the premier wealth management franchise businesses, with Morgan Stanley paying Citigroup $2.7 billion in cash up front for a 51% stake in the joint venture. Morgan Stanley, alongside Smith Barney, was the name of the joint venture. Morgan Stanley later stated that it had renamed its US wealth management subsidiary Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, removing the Smith Barney brand from its joint venture with Citigroup Incorporated. What is the future of Citigroup? Most obligatory banks feel that their banking branches will play a vital role even if clients spend less time in them. Some banks, such as Goldman Sachs, have experienced new approaches for their local presence. Similar to the evolution of physical bookstores, their locations are being used as social gathering spaces. Virgin Money, for example, is transforming its locations into lounges where customers can relax while having coffee. Others, such as Bank of America, may see the writing on the wall. It uses its branches and newly recruited digital ambassadors to educate clients on digital solutions. From this point of view, the authors of the City Research advise banks to look ahead while consumer behavior is evolving and shifting towards digital to varied degrees. City still has a long way to go. According to the research, banks should take a holistic approach to managing their clients' touch points. The shift in consumer behavior is making banks rethink their channel strategy. In our view, the omni-channel strategy is a winning solution for incumbent banks over the next decade because customers interact with their main bank via multiple channels rather than a single channel. The omni-channel strategy should be built around a competitive digital banking offering, a reduced and modernized branch network, and lastly, a targeted channel strategy for different segments of customers, says the report. City Consumer Banking Division in Asia generated $1.6 billion in revenue in the first quarter, a 9% decrease from the first quarter of 2020. City decided to exit its consumer businesses in 13 countries because the operation simply wasn't profitable, says Nathan Storval, Chief Banking Analyst at SP Global Market Intelligence. City had only 35 retail branches in India and approximately 4,000 workers in its consumer banking operation. 
As Nathan Stovall of the SNP rightly says, any bank should arguably consider whether to remain in a business that is not earning its cost of capital, much less one that is producing no earnings. We have seen other banks make similar decisions recently. What do you think can be done to tackle the Citibank crisis? If you liked our video, subscribe to our channel and hit that like button. Don't forget to enable the notifications. Until next time.